In this exercise, we're being asked to convert the equation x squared minus 4x plus y squared equals 0 from rectangular form to cylindrical form. So currently we have x's and y's, there aren't any z's, but there could have been, uh, into cylindrical form that has instead r's and thetas and instead of x's and y's. So you notice this is a little different than the last example. Here we're not converting a point in one form to a point in the other form. We're converting an entire equation. So here's the main thing to remember when you're doing these types of conversions. Um, here, this is the, the one thing I would, I would stress is you want to start with an equation like this that only has x's, y's, and z's and to end with an equation that only has r's, thetas, and z's. Uh, the, probably the, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of times with my students is they'll partially do the conversion. They might get rid of an x squared plus y squared and possibly call it r squared and that's great but they might forget a, a y in, in the equation and not convert that. You have to convert everything. Uh, an analogy I usually give in class is if you're gonna take a sentence in English and translate it into Spanish, you would expect either uh, kind of an all or nothing. The, the sentence either needs to be in English or Spanish, but you can't or you shouldn't really just change like half of it to Spanish but leave the other half in English. So just make sure you're converting everything from one form to the other form. So basically the way these work is you look at your list of conversions that you already have and then uh, you know and there's more than one way to do this but you want to try to take anything that has let's say like an x and convert it to an r cosine theta or, or, or something similar here. Um, but you also want to do it in the smartest way possible. Um, I suppose if you were just, you know, just looking for the easiest way out, you could say anytime I have an X, I'll write R cosine theta, and anytime I have a Y, I'll write an R sine theta. Technically that would work. You would always convert from rectangular to cylindrical, but sometimes there's some short shortcuts. Let, let's look at what we're talking about. So when I look at this, um, I see x squared. One thing that catches my eye is x squared plus y squared. For, for some reason, th this catches my attention. x squared plus y squared. Why does that catch my attention? Can you tell? Uh, it's because of this conversion right here. x squared plus y squared is the same as r squared. So I can take these guys out and swap that with an r squared. So right now I'd have r squared minus 4x equals zero, but that's not sufficient. That is not a correct answer because I still have an x there, which is still in the old rectangular form. I, the, the only thing I can think to do with just an x is convert it to r cosine theta. So you could say r squared minus 4r cosine theta equals zero, or you could say r squared equals 4r cosine theta. If you added that 4r cosine theta to the right, um, you could even divide both sides by an r if you wanted to do that. And you'd have a simplified equation, r equals 4 cosine theta. So I'll box that in there. Notice I have no more x's or y's, it's just r's and thetas. It doesn't have any z's, but that's okay. It doesn't have to have z's, but this is in uh, cylindrical form. Um, now, the only thing I'll say before we finish up this video is you might say, well, well Devin, what, what would have happened if you had done what you said where you just converted the x's and the y's just straight out? I'm not gonna work through all the details, but check this out, the x squared would have been r squared cosine squared theta and the y squared would have been r squared sine squared theta and i'm kind of running out of space but you can tell if you factored out an r squared you would get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta but you should know what that is what is sine squared plus cosine squared it's a trig identity right that equals one so if that equals one you're right back where we started. So there's lots of different routes you can go to get to the same answer. This is probably the most straightforward way of working this example though.